What are the changes in the lens? Iris pigments can be seen on lens surface. Wherever it had temporarily adhered to the lens, the pigments can remain on the lens and these are telltale evidence of old iridus arthritis. But the most important complication occurring in the lens is the posterior subcapsular cataract. The cause of cataract in uveitis is twofold. One is inflammation itself. The second is use of corticosteroids. Corticosteroids is the mainstay of treatment of uveitis and it can result in two complications of cataract and glaucoma which are also the complications of uveitis per se. Any cataract that occurs due to pathology in the eye is called as a complicated cataract. The two characteristic features that are seen in the slit lamp of a complicated cataract are breadcrumb appearance and polychromatic luster. This photo shows lens pigments arranged in a circular fashion over the lens because the pupil which was meiotic and constricted and adhered to the lens is now dilated but has left back pigments on the lens. Also you can see that the cataract is there in the pupillary area. This is a complicated cataract. Changes in the vitreous. Again vitreous has exudates. These exudates get organized. They form vitreous membrane. These membranes can contract. The contraction will cause traction on the retina. The retina is pulled forwards and this is fractional retinal detachment. When there is more traction, it can cause retinal tears and the resultant detachment is called as regmatogenous retinal detachment. Choroid and retina. This is seen in posterior and pan uveitis. Destruction of retinal pigment epithelium and Brooks membrane due to the inflammation. This results in a chorio-retinal atrophic patch. The atrophy results in the white of the sclera seen through in these areas. The chorio-retinal atrophic patch is seen as a whitish area in the fundus. The fibroblastic activity occurring here causes chorio-retinal adhesion at the edges. Similarly, the retinal pigment epithelium at the edges will proliferate as a result of fibroblastic activity and this results in pigmented scars. Another complication occurring in these chorioretinal addition areas are the choroidal neovascular membranes which have a tendency to bleed. All areas of chorioretinal atrophy are permanent scotomas. When this occurs in the macular area, they cause central visual loss. The most common complications of uveitis are cataract, glaucoma, hypotony and cystoid macular edema. We have already discussed cataract, now for glaucoma. Rise in intraocular pressure can be because of a closed angle mechanism or an open angle mechanism. Posterior sinicae we have already seen. When it occurs 360 degrees can result in an annular sinicae, pupil block, iris bombay, angle closure glaucoma. Peripheral anterior sinicae also cause angle closure glaucoma. An open angle glaucoma that is, intraocular pressure is raised in the presence of an open angle, is seen when the cells and protein as a result of exudation in uveitis block the trabecular meshwork or when trabeculitis or the inflammation of the trabecular meshwork occurs as a part of iridocyclitis. And lastly, corticosteroid is the mainstay, as I have said, of treatment of uveitis can itself cause glaucoma. The eye in uveitis can have a normal pressure, a high pressure or a low pressure. Causes of hypotony are an acute inflammation of the ciliary body itself which usually causes a temporary hyposecretion. Sometimes this can be permanent due to chronic ciliary body damage. Ciliary body traction can also occur from a cyclitic membrane. Permanent hypotony is extremely dangerous because this results in permanent loss of vision. Hypotony, in fact, is more dangerous in chronic uveitis than glaucoma. This is a photo of a patient who has a small shrunken eye in the left side and a normal eye in the right side. The right eye pupil is dilated to facilitate fundus examination. But the left eye of the patient is small and it is 
sunken actually digitally it is very soft and it is sightless this eye is thysis bulbi cystoid macular edema is a common complication of you all types of uveitis anterior uveitis intermediate or posterior inflammatory mediators reach the macula and cause cystoid structural changes in the foveal area and this causes loss of vision the photo on the right is a fundus fluorescein angiogram of the foveal area which shows the characteristic petaloid appearance seen due to leakage in this fashion in cystoid macular edema end stage of all inflammatory diseases can be atrophy of the structures of the eye this results in a small glow histopathologically it could be atrophic bulbi or thysis bulbi a small globe or atrophic globe with shrinkage but where the structures are still recognizable as separate is called as atrophic bulbi this occurs for example in chronic long standing uveitis when atrophy occurs with shrinkage and disorganization of the structures so the structures cannot be clearly differentiated then it is called as thysis bulbi for example after a suppurative inflammation inside the eye which actually destroys the structures in purulent endophthalmitis then histopathologically such an eye is called as thysis bulbi in both atrophic and thysis bulbi patient has irreversible blindness clinically any soft eye which is sightless shrunken and shapeless is called as thysis bulbi the shapeless or squared off appearance which is seen in these soft eyes are usually due to the pressure of the recti muscles on a soft glow a few associations seen with thysis bulbi are dystrophic calcification can occur inside the eye or in the cornea it's called as band keratopathy in the cornea there can be intraocular ossification and there is a remote risk of intraocular malignancy in a thysical eye 